Welcome to the fall program of the Vernon Historical Society. The COVID-19 pandemic has made many people reluctant to attend large gatherings. Instead of coming to the Society for a traditional program in our meeting hall, the public is invited to view a video presentation for our virtual fall meeting. This program grew out of a social studies unit on local monuments for second grade students. The original list of six has been expanded to 20 monuments and memorials. Those featured were chosen because the Society has historical photographs of these monuments and memorials in earlier times. Enjoy the program. Compare the then and now photos of familiar or little known places in town and learn their stories. During World War II, residents of the west end of Rockville installed a wooden board near the entrance to the city of Rockville, listing the names of those from the area serving in the armed forces. Sometime after 1955, the board was replaced with a granite monument with the inscription, dedicated to the honor and memory of the men of the west side who served in World War II. A flagpole was later added to the park, along with two bronze markers. One is from the American Legion, and the other is marked U.S. War Veteran. 19 men from Vernon and Rockville died in World War I. In remembrance of each soldier, 19 trees were planted in May 1919 along Union and Maple Streets near the West District School. The present-day Maple Street School was opened in 1924 on the site of the old West District School. Each tree had a bronze plaque with the name of a soldier and his date of death. Ginkgo trees were chosen because they are long-lived and hold up well in wind and ice storms. Eleven trees still have the metal plaques with a soldier's name and date of death. In May 2019, students and teachers at Maple Street School held a ceremony marking the 100th anniversary of this living memorial. In 1904, the Rockville Public Library opened in its present location. The land and this beautiful marble building were given to the town by the family of George Maxwell. A prominent resident of Rockville, Maxwell ran the Hockenham and Springville mills. This portrait hangs in the library's reading room. In 1890, the newly formed city of Rockville finished the construction of its new town hall. Designed in the Romanesque style with massive stone blocks, the building resembles a fortress or castle. Vernon's town hall contains the mayor's office, city council chambers, and many town departments. The memorial building was designed to honor those who served in the Civil War. Civil War symbols were carved above and around the front door. Look carefully to see flags, drums, canteens, guns, and cannons. The memorial building is also home to the New England Civil War Museum. When the building was constructed, a suite of rooms on the second floor was set aside for the Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization. With the passing of the original veterans, the Sons of the Union veterans now occupy the meeting hall and maintain a, the unique collection of Civil War artifacts and a research library. In 1883, Dr. Henry Cogswell, a national leader in the temperance movement, offered to pay for the installation of a water fountain in Central Park in Rockville in honor of his cousin, William Cogswell, a local carpenter and businessman. After the gift was set up in the park, residents were surprised to see a seven and a half foot statue of Dr. Cogswell atop the fountain. The figure of Dr. Cogswell was sculpted holding a water glass in one hand. The other hand carried a scroll representing a pledge to give up alcohol. Opinions were divided on the alcohol question in town. Traditional New Englanders disapproved of drinking, while recent immigrant groups from Ireland and Germany had different traditions involving alcohol. A few years later, the controversial statue disappeared from its perch. Vandals had tossed it into Schnepsit Lake. After repeated vandalism, the statue was removed and a decorative urn was installed in its place. Eventually, the statue was melted down for its metal during World War II. In 2004, Rosetta Pitcat, a Rockville resident and retired teacher, paid to have a reproduction of Dr. Cogswell's statue placed on top of the fountain. The mill village of Rockville expanded rapidly after the Civil War. Wooden structures in the center of Rockville were replaced by handsome brick or stone buildings. In 1879, this multi-story building was constructed and dedicated to the citizens of Rockville. 
The facade of the Citizens Block was restored in 2017. Multi-story buildings such as this were common in towns before the advent of the automobile. Retail establishments occupied the first floors, while offices or apartments were found on the upper floors. Neighborhoods of single and multifamily homes were within walking distance from the factories and the village center. Opened in 1925, this building served as the town's high school until 1959. The previous home of Rockville High School, which was constructed in 1892, had become overcrowded. In addition to needing an updated school with a gymnasium and auditorium, school officials wanted to expand vocational education courses. In 1903, mill owner George Sykes had left money in his will for the town to establish a vocational training school for young men. He regretted his incomplete education and believed that a program of instruction in the trades would better equip local youths for good jobs. The town worked with the Sykes Trust to develop a plan that combined a new high school with the vocational school envisioned by Sykes. In 1854, the Catholic parish of St. Bernard was established in Rockville. The first church, built on the present site, was destroyed by fire in 1904. The current church building was opened in 1908. A white marble monument dedicated to the memory of Father Bernard Tully stands to the right of the front entrance. Father Tully was the first resident pastor of the first St. Bernard's Church from 1854 to 1863. He returned as pastor in 1869. He died suddenly the following year. The Hockenham River widens into Paper Mill Pond, named in the 19th century after a paper mill that sat at the head of the waterfall cascading into Rockville. Later, the paper mill was replaced by a cluster of woolen mills atop the waterfall. An area alongside the pond was used as a lumber yard for many years. Until recently, this property was run down and abandoned. The area has been cleared, landscaped, and recently opened as a park to honor rock and roll music legend Gene Pitney. A Rockville native and 1958 graduate of Rockville High School, Gene Pitney became a successful singer and songwriter with many top 40 songs to his credit. Nicknamed the Rockville Rocket, Pitney was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002. He died in 2006. As a boy, he often fished in Paper Mill Pond. He's fondly remembered by many in his hometown. In 1847, land was purchased near the village of Rockville for a much needed cemetery close to the town. The cemetery was designed with winding streets and attractive landscaping to create a serene feeling. In 1923, a chapel was constructed with funds from the Henry family. According to legend, local business leader and politician E. Stevens Henry and his wife Lucina arrived at Grove Hill Cemetery to attend a funeral. It was raining and the funeral procession had not arrived yet. To take shelter from the rain, Mr. and Mrs. Henry had to wait inside a tool shed. When Mr. Henry died in 1921, he left money to build a place that anyone could use for services. The chapel was named in honor of his wife, Lucina. Built in the Norman style, this non-denominational chapel was constructed from local stone. Just below the bell on the front of the chapel, one can see three carved heads representing three religions. Martin Luther for Protestantism, St. Peter for Catholicism, and King David for Judaism. Originally, Lafayette Park was located on a circle of land in front of the town farm along the Hartford Turnpike near the Tallinn Line. The town farm building was originally constructed by Lemuel King in 1820 as a tavern. With the opening of the turnpike to Hartford in 1801, taverns were built near the road to feed and house travelers journeying by stagecoach. In 1824, Revolutionary War hero, the Marquis de Lafayette, embarked on a lengthy tour of the United States. In addition to stopping at major cities, he visited battle sites and met with fellow veterans. Lemuel King had served in the war with the general. He invited Lafayette to dine at his tavern, which he had specially decorated for the occasion. On his way from Stafford to Hartford on September 4, 1824, Lafayette joined King and local citizens for a meal at the tavern. In June 1902, the park was dedicated in memory of the visit by the Daughters of the American Revolution. This photograph from the dedication shows the former tavern festooned with bunting. A bronze plaque was mounted on a large boulder found at a nearby farm. The stone trough in the park was placed there to provide water for horses. 
The monument and the water trough remained in the park until the early 1990s when the intersection was redesigned. Both were moved to a more easily accessible location. A local businessman, mayor, and representative to the United States Congress, E. Stevens Henry also found time to be a gentleman farmer. He owned land along South Street where he raised prize-winning Jersey cattle. In his will, he left part of his farm, including Fox Hill, to the city of Rockville for use as a public park. Visitors to Henry Park can find a number of monuments and memorials to people who valued the role of sports and who wanted to offer the public space for a variety of recreation and team sports. Near the entrance to Henry Park, a bronze marker on a large stone remembers Carlton Milanese, a strong supporter of recreation and youth sports. Frank McCoy Field was named in honor of Frank J. McCoy, a local lawyer and four-term mayor of Vernon, who was the founder of the Vernon Orioles baseball team. A member of the Twilight League, the team plays its home games at McCoy Field. Several years ago, the Hartman family funded some major improvements to McCoy Field. New bleachers, fencing, a press box, and public address system were installed. Brendan Mayu Alley remembers a young man from the Hartman family, a gifted baseball player while in high school, who passed away unexpectedly. The Lottie Fisk building in Henry Park was built in her memory from money that came from the estate of her husband, Judge John Fisk. Opened in 1959, the building houses the Vernon Parks and Recreation Department. These tennis courts were funded by a bequest from the estate of Ruth Talcott Britton. In 1930, she chose to leave money to construct tennis courts because there were no public courts in town at that time. The Hartman Pavilion was given to the community by the Hartman Family Foundation in memory of Russell Hartman, a respected businessman. Mr. Hartman owned a supermarket in Rockville and actively supported charitable and civic organizations. The first public pool in town, the Horowitz Pool, was opened to the community in August 1953. Generations of Vernon kids have learned how to swim here. Many families have enjoyed a refreshing swim on a hot summer day. William R. Horowitz was the president of the American Dye Company, later named Amerbell. Known for his interest in civic betterment projects, he had been involved in planning for a community pool shortly before his death in May 1952. In his will, he designated $10,000 for a pool with the town and public to contribute the rest of the money. Within a year, the matching funds were raised and the pool was completed. Gill Field was named for John Gill, a longtime baseball coach and one of the founders of the Rockville Little League. Hans Peterson Field honors Hans Peterson, who served as president of the Rockville Little League and was an active volunteer in the organization. John Gottier Field was donated by the Gottier family in honor of John Gottier, a local builder. One of his significant projects was the design and construction of an addition to Rockville General Hospital. The Rockville Little League Monument was installed to celebrate 60 years of Little League baseball from 1950 to 2010. The flagpole is surrounded by pavers etched with the names of players, coaches, and teams from over the years. In August 1939, crowds gathered to attend the dedication of the War Memorial Tower on Fox Hill, overlooking Rockville. Designed by architect Walter B. Chambers of New York, the tower was built as a memorial to the veterans of all wars. The structure was modeled after a 1,500-year-old Romanesque tower in France. Built with labor and materials supplied by the Works Progress Administration, the tower took shape over two years and was made of stone quarried from the Burgundy Quarry in Tolland. Visitors with sharp eyes will find a U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey and Triangulation Station marker embedded in the walkway near the steps to the tower entrance. These disks are installed to mark distinctive places on the landscape and are part of a network of sites used for surveying and land triangulation. Vernon's first Congregational Church, or Meeting House, was built in 1762 on a hilltop overlooking Vernon Center in the Tankerhusen River Valley. The congregation used the building until 1826, when it was replaced by the present First Congregational Church on Hartford Turnpike. A plaque set near the site of the first Meeting House can be found close to the top of Sunnyview Drive. 
The turnpike system expanded during the early 19th century with a network of roads and inns throughout New England. Travelers journeying by stagecoach from Hartford to Massachusetts passed through Vernon along the Hartford Turnpike. Milestones were installed by the Turnpike Company to provide information about the distances between locations. This milestone, placed near a tavern in Vernon Center in 1801, was etched with the letters V I M T C H. This means six miles to Tallinn Courthouse. One of the few remaining milestones in existence, the one in Vernon Center was encased in granite in 1934 and is accompanied by a plaque from the Daughters of the American Revolution. One of several Vernon soldiers who died in the Vietnam War, Whitney Ferguson grew up in Vernon Center and graduated from Rockville High School in 1964. Vernon remembers those who died in the Vietnam War and honors those who served with a monument in Central Park in front of the town hall. As a part of the expansion of the Hartford, Providence and Fishkill Railroad, a tunnel was constructed through the embankment that supported the tracks. Finished in 1849, the tunnel was built by masons and stonecutters, many of whom were recent immigrants from Ireland. The tunnel is an engineering marvel. It is 108 feet long, 14 feet high, 16 feet wide, and is made of 30 sets of connected arches with a keystone set at the top of each arch. The tunnel outlasted the railroad, which closed in the 1970s. The station at Vernon Depot, shown here in the early 20th century, handled freight and passenger traffic for the New England Railroad. In 1893, 14 passenger trains passed through Vernon each day. 11 people were needed to run the operations at the station. The present-day structure on the site of the former station has informational panels and was built as an Eagle Scout project in 1999. In this picture from the early 20th century, a boy stands on a cluster of rail tracks that pass through Vernon Depot, including the rail line from Rockville. First opened in 1863, the Rockville line not only carried passengers, but brought in raw materials for the woolen mills and carried out the finished textiles. Once an active mill village, little remains of Dobsonville but the town's name, some workers' homes, and factory ruins along the Tankerhusen River. In 1811, Peter Dobson built two cotton spinning mills near a ravine along the Tankerhusen River. A fire destroyed one mill in 1906. The other operated as the Ackerley Mills until 1920. By the late 1930s, that vacant mill was torn down. Early mill owners built a dam across the Tankerhusen River. The water supplied the energy to power the machinery. The dam, as seen today from the ravine, is a reminder of Vernon's early industrial history. Another site on the Tankerhusen River was developed for industrial use. An early sawmill was replaced by one for producing cotton warp. This 1895 map shows the locations of the factory, buildings, and homes. In the late 1920s, the mill buildings burned and were not replaced. A scenic park near the Phoenix Mill Dam was established with the assistance of the Talcott family, the Hockenham River Linear Park, and the town of Vernon. This monument introduces visitors to the Talcottville Historic District and provides a timeline for the history of the village. The monument was installed on land across from the Talcottville Congregational Church, where the Talcott brothers built a library for the community. When the Talcott brothers purchased the mill, outbuildings, and workers' homes in 1856, they renamed the community Talcottville. They expanded the factory and the town. Along with the library, they built more homes, a store, and a school to attract skilled textile workers. This photograph shows the Talcott Brothers Mill as it appeared in the late 19th century. The Talcott Company operated until 1940. Over the years, other companies used the factory for manufacturing, including Alden Mills, which produced high-quality yarn. By the 1990s, the building had been abandoned and was in danger of demolition. The deteriorating wooden mill was beautifully restored and converted into apartments, which became available in 2017. Talcottville remains an excellent example of an early 19th century factory village. Visitors can stroll along Main Street to see homes constructed for workers, 
or cross the Main Street Bridge over the Tankerhusen River to follow the path into Talcott Ravine. A map showing the locations of these monuments and memorials is posted on the Vernon Historical Society webpage at vernonhistoricalsoc.org. Our history is in plain sight if you know where to look. Now that you've learned these stories, go find the sites for yourself.